Okay. I want to just finish up with a few things about our gaseous transmitter, our gas hormone, the stinky hydrogen sulfide, the odiferous, toxic hydrogen sulfide, which even though it does have a certain amount of toxicity, is also a type of hormone. It communicates to the cells that control blood vessels and blood cells and brain cells. It has a relaxing effect. This, might, this is one of the reasons why sulfur hot springs can be so relaxing, why sulfur hot springs have a, a long-standing reputation for being healing. This can be very significant for mental health issues, for brain health issues. Hydrogen sulfide is produced in re uh, uh, relatively high concentrations in the brain. It plays a role in thinking, memory, regulation of the heart, the lungs. Helps maintain the health of the nerve cells and the nervous system. So important, this stuff. Blood supply. One of its most important roles involves blood sugar processing. We talked about this yesterday. It protects the pancreas from excess sugar. It protects the beta cells. The beta cells are the cells that make insulin. And as our, uh, as our diabetic or, or blood sugar conditions start to progress, the beta cells suffer. Hydrogen sulfide protects the beta cells, these little insulin-making factories that bear the brunt of having to process 22 or 25 teaspoonfuls of sugar a day. The blood's, uh, entire five liters of blood, around a little over a gallon of blood, you need to have one teaspoon of sugar. Most of us are getting 20 or more teaspoons of sugar a day. Some people are getting 40 teaspoons of sugar a day. Can you imagine this? You only need one teaspoon of sugar in the blood but uh, many of us are subjecting our bodies to 40 times that much in a day. Is it any wonder why one out of three Americans has diabetes or uh, maybe one out of two Americans has prediabetes or diabetes? In any case, sugar amps up, revs up the biochemistry. This is why it's considered a poison. When the insulin-making cells are bombarded with this poison, this sweet poison, they'll release their own hydrogen sulfide as a way of protecting themselves. It happens once in a while. It's not a big deal, but over the course of years and decades eventually all that hydrogen sulfide remember it's got a certain toxicity associated associated with it all that hydrogen sulfide can weaken and ultimately kill those beta cells this is one of the reasons why beta cells suffer from long-term dysglycemia messed up blood sugar hydrogen sulfide is a hibernation hormone it's a suspended animation hormone relaxation hormone it keeps the biochemistry from careening out of control it's a key player in tiny 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 amounts the problem with hydrogen sulfide is when we're uh, our bodies are secreting lots and lots of hydrogen sulfide and that's where cell damage can occur hydrogen sulfide has a certain toxicity associated with it much like carbon monoxide which we talked about a couple weeks ago as a neuro as a as a hormone hydrogen sulfide like carbon monoxide is both a toxic gas in high amounts and also a neuro uh, uh, a uh, hormone a gas hormone in in small amounts hydrogen sulfide gas was actually used in world war one as a weapon, as a, as, as a chemical, for, as part of chemical warfare. It's part of uh, toxic waste, sewage, uh, decomposition can release hydrogen sulfide. Utility workers and people who work in oil drilling will sometimes wear hydrogen sulfide monitors to make sure uh, their hydrogen sulfide levels, they're not breathing too much hydrogen sulfide. The most important thing from a nutritional standpoint, if you want to make sure you're making enough hydrogen sulfide, is get yourself on MSM sulfur. MSM sulfur is an amazing nutritional supplement, completely non-toxic and benign, and a wonderful source of sulfur. Hang tight, we'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 877-300-7645 is our number. We'll be back right after this. On the Bright Side, don't go away. Okay, let's see here. Finishing up with a couple more things about hydrogen sulfide, the relaxing neurotransmitter. From a nutritional standpoint, get enough sulfur. Sulfur deficiency is very common. Meat, eggs, dairy, these are all good sources of sulfur. Beans, garlic, onions, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, and you want to guarantee that you're getting enough sulfur. It seems to me like MSM sulfur is just the best way to make sure you're getting enough sulfur. It's really cheap. It's around, I don't know, 16 bucks for a month's supply. Uh, 1,000 milligrams a day is all you need. You'll get your MSM sulfur in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and various longevity products. Dr. Wallach has been hip to sulfur for many years. Cartilage products will contain sulfur. In fact, cart one of the neatest things about bone soup is it's got liquid sulfur. It's a source of liquid sulfur, liquefied sulfur. Make sure you get your, uh, make sure the sulfur that you're getting is absorbed. Sulfur is one of the most common and underappreciated of the soil-based nutritional deficiencies. There's two main sulfur amino acids that, uh, that require sulfur in the soil, cysteine and methionine. These are very, very important amino acids for building, for repair, for growth, 
for post-surgery, for folks in nursing homes, for people who are dealing with wasting, ish, wasting away diseases, cachexia as it's called, C-H-E-X-I-A, that means wasting diseases, cancer can cause these kinds of things. Sulfur is a prime, prime, prime building element, especially via these amino acids, and because they're not in the soils, the amino acids aren't in the plants, the plants don't make the protein, and on up the food chain it goes. I think that's all I'm going to say about, uh, about hydrogen sulfide. I want to move into our third, neuro uh, third gas transmitters. There's three main gas hormones, gas transmitters as they call them, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, and then the most famous of the gas hormones, the first one that was discovered uh, not even that long ago in the I believe it was the 1980s they first realized that this stuff was actually a hormone. It's called nitric oxide. And most people, if they've been, uh, if they're hip to nutrition, have heard of this stuff, nitric oxide. These days there's a lot of products available on the internet, uh, supplements available that supposedly work to support nitric oxide levels. You can uh, boost your own nitric oxide with amino acids. We'll be talking about nitric oxide here for, for the next few days. And even though you hear lots of stuff about nitric oxide, it wasn't always that way. When I started studying nutrition in the early 1980s, no one really talked about nitric oxide. Nobody even knew about nitric oxide. Even scientists and chemists, even scientists and biochemists didn't really know about nitric oxide. Certainly in pharmacy school, we didn't talk, any, uh, we didn't talk about nitric oxide. Um, we didn't talk, I graduated pharmacy school in 1986, and I don't believe we ever even mentioned nitric oxide. Nitric oxide and hydrogen sulfide and carbon monoxide, these gas transmitters are especially important for inflammation and anti-inflammation, especially important for pain, inflammation, anti-inflammation and pain, and for the opening and closing of blood vessels. And between these two systems, between the blood system, the cardiovascular system, the heart and the blood system, and the inflammatory system, and the nervous systems, uh, you're pretty much dealing with... Uh, with all of the places that nitric oxide and these other neurotrans gas hormones work. Inflammation and pain, the blood vessel system, and then the brain and the nervous system. What makes these chemicals so important and so functional is their nature as a vapor, as a gas. And this allows them to cover large amounts of territory in a single puff, and it makes them ideal for emergencies. These gas hormones are emergency hormones. They're involved whenever the body has to have a quick reaction and doesn't need the brain involved. Nitric oxide and carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide work without the brain being involved. They work instantaneously. This makes them emergency, uh, this makes them uh, very important for emergency response. Remember, the body's made up of trillions and trillions of independent entities, independent animals that somehow get together to form the human body. And in order for the human body to be able to operate in this coherent fashion, in order for all of these hundreds of, tr hundred trillion cells or so to operate in a coordinated way to create a human body, you've got to have some kind of communication going on. Nitric oxide is a key player in this communication process. It's super functional. It's super ephemeral. It's, it's, it's here and then it's, th it's gone. Poof. Just like a gas. That's one of the reasons why we didn't know about it until, until 30 or 40 years ago, even though it's got some tremendous biological activity. Nitric oxide is a gas, and, it, and it's a pollutant. It's part of air pollution, really. Just like hydrogen sulfide and carbon monoxide, nitric oxide is both a hormone, both a communicator in the body, and also a toxin in the environment, a pollutant in the environment. It's a byproduct of, of the internal combustion engine. It's a byproduct of industrial processes. It's produced in lightning storms. But inside the body, that's a totally different story. Inside the body, it is not a toxic gas at all. It's a magical breeze. A magical wind that is especially important, as I say, for the cardiovascular, for the heart and blood vessel system, for the blood, uh, for the circulatory system. It relaxes the circulatory system. It's, as, it's super cool stuff uh, in a body that's filled with super high-tech stuff. Nitric oxide is among the most high-tech of the, of the systems or the, of the chemicals in the body. It's got an amazing power. And considering it, the fact that it's so ephemeral, it's, it's so here and there. It's so quickly deactivated. It's pretty amazing how powerful this stuff is. We've talked a lot about nitrogen as an energetic element. Nitrogen gives protein and amino acids their fundamental characteristics. Proteins and amino acids are the, the key components of life, and they're, uh, the reason they're the key components of life is because of this little element of nitrogen, at least one of the major reasons they're so important, is because of this little explosive element, nitrogen. Biologists will tell you that the Earth is 4 billion years old, 
and uh, for the first 500 million years, there was no life. There was no, nothing living on the planet. It was just a rock spinning around in space with some gases and some chemicals, some minerals. And it wasn't until uh, three and a half billion years ago that the living material, that life first appeared on Earth. Now, nobody really knows how this all happened, but as the theory goes, the first forms of life were basically, or the beginnings of life, they weren't really life, but the beginnings of life were these amino acids, these nitrogen compounds that came from volcanoes that mixed with various gases, sulfur and oxygen, and then combined with electrical energy from lightning and between the nitrogen from the, and sulfur from the volcanoes and oxygen that was in the atmosphere and lightning that, that kind of sparked into the sky periodically, boom, amino acids were formed. And uh, from amino acids, it was a short jump to proteins, and proteins are the stars of the movie called life, the, the Brad Pitts of the movie that we call biological life, and nitrogen is the star of protein. So protein is the star of life, and nitrogen is the star of protein. Nitrogen is the key element of life, and the proteins they form are basically combinations of carbon and oxygen with a little piece of nitrogen attached to them. We call carbon and oxygen and hydrogen a carbohydrate. You stick a little piece of nitrogen, boom, you got yourself a protein. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen is a carbohydrate. Stick a nitrogen onto that carb, and you got a protein. A protein is just basically a nitrogenated, a nitrogen plus a carbohydrate. All right, hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back from a break and take your calls as well. We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. If you miss a program, you can just uh, you can go over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. They all have search engines. You can search for particular shows if you miss a program or if you want to refer a friend or a loved one to a program to cover a various topic. I try to cover as many different topics on this program even they don't they don't seem exactly nutritionally related they all have something to do with the body nitric oxide and hydrogen sulfide are classic examples they're not strictly nutritional but they all have something to do with health could be you're going to be hearing a lot about nitric oxide in the future there's all kinds of information there's a lot of information coming out now about the sun and nitric oxide how you can actually upregulate nitric oxide production with the sun i've been doing a lot of research on the sun here this winter in fact, I posted on Facebook yesterday a neat article about the sun and weight loss. Uh, sun exposure is a great way to suppress your appetite and to lose weight, in addition to helping you lower blood pressure, improve diabetes symptoms. There's all kinds of benefits with getting out in the sun. And a lot of, that, a lot of the benefits from the sun have to do with upregulation or increasing the amount of nitric oxide in the body. Nitric oxide is a nitrogen-derived uh, uh, hormone, gas hormone. Nitrogen's super-duper important. Nitrogen's involved... Obviously, in, in the star of life, which is protein, amino acids and protein are what they are because of nitrogen. A protein or an amino acid is nothing more than a carbohydrate, a fat or a sugar with a little piece of nitrogen stuck on it. And that little piece of nitrogen that's stuck on the carbohydrate changes everything about the carbohydrate, which goes from being a little piece of energy into a very functional biochemical hardware. Protein is hardware. Carbohydrates and fats and and sugars, these are important, uh, but they're not important in terms of hardware. They're more like energy. Uh, they're more like condensed energy in ways that the body can energize itself by breaking down protein, uh, breaking down fats and breaking down sugars. But you stick a little piece of nitrogen on there and that, that energy ball, that little marshmallow, if you will, becomes a piece of hardware and it becomes functional. And this is what makes protein the stars of the body. I'm telling you, protein is so, so underappreciated. And nothing makes me angry when I, I read these crazy things on the Internet about how protein is overrated, you don't need a lot of protein, and uh, people get too much protein, blah, 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 blah. fact of the matter is most of your body is protein, not fat, not sugar. Most of it is protein, not vitamins, not minerals. Most of it is protein, probably 70% or so is protein. So anybody who tells you that you don't need a lot of protein needs to go back to biochemistry or biology 101. Anyway. Uh, nitric oxide, we'll continue talking about nitric oxide and its importance. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about a personal story I had with, with nitrogen, nitrogen gas, back when, I was in a, back when I was getting my first college degree. I'll tell you all about that tomorrow as we continue talking. Nitrogen and nitric oxide on the bright side. Okay, got some lines open for you at 877-300-7645. Let's take our first phone call today. Nancy in Tennessee, what's going on? I'm so glad to get you. Um, well, my yes. grandson, yes. <laughs> my grandson has a rash on his face. It's like uh, little pimples. Uh, 
Okay, how old is he? He's not even two. He'll be two in January. Super easy. Um, Mega, mega easy. Mega, mega easy. She's trying to feed him paleo, so she's trying to work with what foods he's taking and trying to keep track of what's causing things, but she can't get it cleared up. Is she breastfeeding? No, I guess not. She's not breastfeeding, She is. She's still breastfeeding, yes. Oh, she is still breastfeeding. Okay. And is he 100% being breastfed, or is it partial breastfed, partial formula, or what's the deal? Um, well, he does drink some almond milk, and he takes tangy tangerine, but he's, yeah, he has no uh, formula. Did they just appear? All. Did the breakouts just appear, or, or did he have uh, them from, from early on? Probably been going on since September, and at that time, they became, like, really big boils. And just Ooh, you didn't tell That's me that. Different. That's different. Big yeah. boils. Okay. It's, He's got so something going on happened, there. It only happened once. Now it's just little under the Whiteheads? Little whiteheads or the, just hard bumps? He, they're kind of like hard bumps with a red, but some of them are kind of a brownish, uh, starting like a little brownish pinpoint looking thing. Okay. You got good, got good news and bad news for you. The okay. bad news is the bad news is this is not a good this is a this is bad sign bad sign it's a sign that he could have some issues later on. The good news is he can turn it around almost instantly almost instantly. Okay. Right? The only thing the only thing that's going to cause this uh, kind of problem is something that's getting into his body, and because he's mostly being breastfed, it's got to be something in the breast milk, and mm-hmm. that means mom's got a problem. Okay, yeah. so mom must have some issues, some health issues. Is this your daughter or your daughter-in-law? My daughter. Okay. Did she have any problems growing up? Skin problems or allergic problems or digestive problems? She had, as I remember, she had bad acne, really okay. bad acne. How about when she was a child? I mean, uh, like a, uh, an infant. Digestive issues? Was she <laughs> allergic, uh, colicky, she, anything like that? No. She had, she had, she was allergic to a moxicillin they gave her one time. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, but you didn't notice any colicky problems or anything like that? Yes, actually, when she was young, she did. She was very colicky. Okay. Well, these are all these are all indicators of what's happening. Okay, and it's very it's good news because this is going to be super easy to treat. Mom has to address. This is not a baby problem. This is a mom problem. So okay. mom has to focus on her health because something is getting into her milk that is uh, that the the baby's having a problem processing. So mom has to focus on her digestive issues. First of all, so if mom has any food allergies or she's reacting to foods in a negative fashion, those have to be noted and eliminated. And a mom probably should be doing a food diary. Do you know what that is? You want me to tell you about that? That's yeah, really important. Fine. You know what that mm-hmm. is, a food diary? For all the listeners, listen, you guys, everybody listening to this program right now, if you're dealing with a health challenge, there is nothing, no nutritional supplement, no formula, nothing you get on the internet or hear on a radio show or hear from the multi-level company or anywhere that is more important for your health condition if you're dealing with any kind of health challenge than to do a food diary. And I know it's a little bit difficult, a little bit tricky. You know, it's kind of inconvenient to do. But if you're dealing with a health challenge, it is job number one to isolate foods that are causing a problem. And for Nancy, for your uh, daughter and for baby, it's absolutely imperative that she figures out what kind of food she's having issues with and memory doesn't work. Using just trying to remember what you have a problem with is fraught with uh, with problems because our memories just we don't have that good memories for our foods, especially if it's something that's been happening over and over and over again. We tend to our brain doesn't notice things that happen routinely. So by writing things down, you're going to be blown away by what you find out, or your daughter will be blown away by what she finds out. Write down everything she eats and then how she feels after that every two, four, six, eight hours, and keep a running total for two weeks and see what she notices. Any kind of problem, the the most likely suspects are going to be foods she loves the most. This is true for everybody listening, by the way. The most likely suspects are going to be foods we love the most, and then what I call the GLED foods. That is, grains, I'm not, I didn't say gluten, by the way. Everybody thinks gluten. I said grains, all grains, whether they're gluten-free or gluten-rich, whatever. Grains can, I'm not saying definitely a problem, but that's something to look at. All grains, all legumes. Eggs and dairy. Grains, legumes, eggs, and dairy. I call it the GLED foods. And I'm not saying that's going to be 100% the, uh, the problem, but those are the first things to look at. The, your favorite foods and then the GLED foods. Second thing, have mom get on the Biolumin Nightly Essence or some similar uh, effective probiotic supplement. I like the Biolumin Nightly Essence. It's my favorite. It's got digestive enzymes with it, and it's got a nice, round, uh, well-rounded spectrum of different bacteria, and it's reasonably priced. Uh, have her take three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night, Fermented foods can also help mom. Uh, There's an amino acid called glutamine, G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E. She may want one or two grams of that a day. We're going to be talking about another amino acid for the digestive system called citrulline. And that might be something that she wants to think about. Hang tight, Nancy. I've got to take a break. I've got a couple more ideas for you uh, for taking care of a baby's skin. All 
baby skin problems need to be considered a digestive issue. If the baby's breastfeeding, it's a mom digestive issue. And by the way, all skin problems, you gotta focus at least partially on the digestive system. I'm giving you that tip from 30 years of being in the skincare business. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this, don't go away. Okay, we are back talking to Nancy. All skin conditions, Nancy, especially for babies, infants who are breastfeeding, uh, or, on farm, or on formula, need to be regarded as a digestive issue first. That's all skin issues. Psoriasis, and I'm talking about not just for babies, for everybody. Psoriasis, eczema, acne, whatever. I'm giving you this from giving you this advice from 30 years of experience. The digestive system is the skin outside in. The digestive system is the the, the skin is the digestive system outside in, and the digestive system is the skin inside out. They're very, very similar systems, and they both are, uh, invo- they're both in, uh, are involved with protecting the body, the outside. The skin protects the, the body from outside environment, and the digestive tract lining protects the body from foods that we put into it. And they're both immune defensive organs. B- uh, blemishes, pimples, bumps... All these are signs that the immune system has been activated. That means the body's defending itself from something. Most likely suspect's going to be food. Uh, Nancy, because your mom, uh, because mom is breastfeeding, your daughter's breastfeeding, the chances are the mom is contributing to the problem. Have mom look at digestive issues. Have mom uh, use probiotics, good nutritional, uh, uh, good probiotic supplement, as well as uh, pro, uh, fermented foods. Get a book called The Art of Fermentation or Wild Fermentation. That's another good fermentation book. You can also use uh, glutamine powder to build the digestive lining. There's an amino acid derivative called citrulline. Actually, it's an amino acid. It's called citrulline. We'll be talking about that in the next few days. That can help build the digestive system. Bone soup can help build mom's digestive system. Of course, also have mom do a food diary and eliminate problem foods. The Fucoidin Z is a wonderful way to build up the digestive lining as well. Apple cider vinegar after all meals can help too. And again, the most likely food suspects for mom are going to be A, all the foods she loves the most, and B, the gled foods, grains, legumes, eggs, and dairy. Okay? Yes. Now, uh-huh. yes. Ben, ben, my grandson, he eats a lot of sauerkraut. He drinks kombucha. He Good. loves olives. And um, somewhere she read an article that that can cause problems on the skin. So, uh, no, but, I doubt it. But, but yeah. there's no way to tell for sure. The only way is to withdraw the food and then see what happens. But I'm guessing that's... Are you saying the same baby with the breakouts is also eating sauerkraut? Yes, he loves okay. sauerkraut. <laughs> how, so how much is your... Bre- what's the percentage of breast milk or breastfeeding that he's well, getting? You know, 50-50? He's, he's almost two. Right now, no, he just he just breastfeeds at night, basically, and when he's I ready see. for a nap. You know, it's just kind of now just more... Comfort. Okay, I misunderstood. I thought you meant that he was mostly breastfeeding. In any case, then have mom look, but then you also have to look at what the baby's eating. But the point is, it's food. It's food, yeah. food, food. And if you don't control it now, here's the deal. You know, I, I don't know if you've been listening to this program, how long you've been listening to the program, but there's something we talk about on the bright side called the triangle of disease. And the triangle of diseases are the three points, form a triangle, there are three points that all degenerative disease come from. Beneath all degenerative disease, all the 12,800 different diseases, degenerative diseases that doctors can diagnose, all of them have, a bl- have, the, uh, have this, this triad of, sympt- uh, of uh, breakdowns in the body that start off with the digestive system, move on to the blood sugar system, and then affect the adrenal thyroid complex, what I call the adrenal thyroid complex. But it starts with the digestive system at childhood or at, or at infanthood in babyhood, and then it moves to the blood sugar system. Once we have problems in the gut, and by the way, was he bre- was, was baby born uh, normally vaginal birth or cesarean or anything? How was the baby born? He was uh, induced, and it was a horrible, horrible traumatic These birth. are all signs of dis- messed up gut yeah. bacteria. So these are all problem signs, and this is what it could be related to. The point is, is once the digestive system's compromised, and your baby, uh, what's the baby's name? Ben. What is it, Ben? Benjamin, yes. Okay, good. Cool name. So uh, mm-hmm. Benjamin, once Benjamin was born, he immediately had a compromised e- uh, digestive system because of this whole induction, labor induction, and all of the stuff that was going on. He didn't get a chance. His body didn't get a chance, probably. His body didn't get a chance to, to build up that gut bacteria population. So he's compromised from day one, and he's not unusual. This is, a, this is more, more typical than not. We come out of the birth canal compromised at the digestive system level, and because gut bacteria, and this is so, so important, you guys, 
because gut bacteria and digestive processing are important for energy, once we start to get messed up at the gut level, we don't process energy correctly, we don't get energy correctly from foods, this throws off the blood sugar. So your baby boy, your uh, a grandbaby boy Benjamin is at risk for blood sugar issues and then thyroid and adrenal issues after that and then all kinds of degenerative diseases to follow. How do you handle it? Focus on the gut job number one, the digestive system. So for baby, everything I just said for mom, you got to do for baby as well. See if she can notice when the breakouts get worse and then, uh, and then link those breakouts to uh, those flare-ups to problem foods. Got to move on, Nancy. I hope I helped you. What Is that good? Yeah. Would sweeties be good with him? No, okay, you don't need, no, I wouldn't mess around with the sweeties. I, I wouldn't mess around with anything until I figured out exactly what kind of foods he was reacting to. Would you stay in touch with me, Nancy? You got me all curious now. Uh, shoot me an email or, uh, or call the radio program, ben at ksco.com. And if you have further questions, I can help you. I'd like to know how Benjamin does. Okay? Okay. Great. Thank you so much. God bless you, ma'am. Okay. Let's see. Brock in Washington. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Bright Side. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing good. What's up? Okay. Uh, my girlfriend, she has a stigmatism, and she was considering LASIK surgery, but we're wondering, is there a well, nutritional you know, there's, protocol have, that could help? Not really. An astigmatism is a focusing problem. And that usually means the muscles in the eye are starting to get weaker. Uh, and whenever you, have, whenever you have muscles that are getting weaker, you want to think of just plain old degeneration. So an astigmatism is like arthritis of the eye muscles, if you will, or the eye tissue, if you, the, not the eyes itself, but the, the controlling elements, the, the muscles and the connective tissue that control how the eyes focus. It's a degenerative condition. So it's like an arthritis of the eye muscles or arthritis of the eye, eye connective tissue. So you want to start to build the body up again. How, how old is your, do- is your uh, girlfriend? Uh, 28. Okay, well, she's, you know, she's just starting at that age. Believe it or not, that's when, the, that's when we hit the wall at the age of 28, when the breakdown process starts to begin. Uh, we, we're, we're peaking up until around the age of 28, and then we hit 28. I call it the wall. We hit the wall, and that's when all the, the degenerative degeneration starts for some, more, for some folks faster than for others, and that's what astigmatism needs to be considered, a sign that the body's beginning to degenerate. So all the things we do to reverse degeneration. Number one, co- correct any digestive issues. If you can see them, correct them. Eliminate problem foods, use probiotics, glutamine powder, etc. Uh, secondly, keeping your sugar intake down. There's a re- very important relationship between eye health and sugar. Uh, if she's a sugar junkie, have her using more protein, maybe the Slender FX or whey protein to help build the body back up. Anything you could do to reduce your intake of sugar is going to improve degeneration and then also using nutrients that help the body process sugar. The sweeties, and the B vitamins are two of your most important ways, uh, nutritional elements for, for helping the body process sugar. Maybe two sweeties after every meal and then sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. Don't underestimate the importance of essential fatty acids for building connective tissue. Uh, EFA supplements are absolutely a must-have. They're not going to be in foods, your essential fatty acids. I like the ultimate EFAs, of course, three capsules, three times a day. You might also want to try the Vision FX, although that's more for the eyes than it is for the eye muscles and the eye tissue. Uh, but the Vision FX is just good as an all-around vision supplement, and of course the Healthy Start Pack, that goes without saying. So focus basically on degeneration. It might not seem like an astigmatism is a sign of, de- of the body degenerating, but when you understand the, the nature of the muscles and the connective tissue and how important they are for focusing, it does make sense that uh, once the connective tissue and the muscle tissue start to break down, that we'll also have problems focusing. And most people, most Americans anyway, will have eye issues, uh, eye focusing issues, whether it's nearsightedness or farsightedness or astigmatism issues um, uh, as, uh, as we get older simply because of the standard American diet and how we live our lives. So don't focus so much on the astigmatism, uh, which, uh, which is a, a curvature issue, has to do with how the, how the, uh, eye, eyes, the, the uh, eye lens pulls and and it relaxes. It all has to do with muscles and, and connective tissue. And then, uh, 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 even though it doesn't seem like it might be related, it is a connective tissue and a muscle tissue disease, uh, issue, and it has to do with degeneration, building the body back up, weightlifting for the eye muscles, if you will. Um, and again, it has to do with the lens of the eye curve, not curving correctly and changing the way the, fo- changing the, way the eye focuses, secondary following degeneration of the muscle and the connective tissue in the eye area. Hope that helps you. Thank you so much for your call. Uh, Brock in Washington, anything else you want to ask me? Uh, Yeah, so uh, the nutritional protocol, will that help 
um, yes. I guess, improve the vision and bring it closer to, to a 2020 type depending of vision? Depending on how degraded, depend, depending on how degraded. You know, think about the eye. The eye lens is kind of a cur- curving around the eye and the pulling uh, and the eye lens gets pulled or relaxes based on muscles and connective tissue. When those muscles and connective tissue break down, it's going to cause a, a change in the curvature of the lens. Uh, so you're going to be building that up. Uh, I, I can't tell you because I don't know uh, how fast it'll, how fast these strategies will work or whether they'll work at all because I don't know how degraded she is, but that's the concept. You want to work on the muscles and the connective tissue that are pulling and relaxing on that lens. Thanks for your call, Brock. And that's the end of the program. Uh, let's see. Anything else I want to tell you guys? No, that's it. We're going to continue talking about nitric oxide tomorrow. Uh, nitrogen as well, and we'll talk about some strategies for building nitric oxide as we continue talking about gas hormones on the bright side. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, spectacular, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.